papers used to come into for sale. And uh, also, we'd get told off if we, we used to climb up the slides. There were different size slides for different age groups. And we used to climb up the slide inside <laughs> instead of going up the stairs, the uh, steps. And they used to, we'd get a telling off for that. And of course, we'd make the, the brass bits all muddy and that, you know, when the weather wasn't very good. And uh, they'd have to clean it all off. My most intense memory of the northern end of the level is the mass of bonfires, big bonfires that there were burning on that end of the level because that's all grass and had been grass from time immemorial. And there wasn't just one big bonfire, there were lots of them and they were all big. And so you can imagine it's dark, there are these big bonfires, the sky is glowing with all this fire and it's a very intense acrid smell. They're all burning, all their old rubbish, everything that could be gathered onto a bonfire had been gathered onto it and was burning. And because the lads had saved their pennies that they collected on street corners, they'd all brought fireworks. And not rockets, which it, people tend to be keen on these days, or not so very many, but there were things which went bang and things called jumping jacks, which leapt along the ground and then went bang. So it was a rare event for my mother to take me out anyway, and then to take me out at night down to the level and to see this scene of all these fires burning and all this noise and all the smoke is a very intense memory and remains with me still. I met a woman called Lois Laurie, who recently moved from Nottingham, who used to organise, who helped to organise rock and reggae festivals in Nottingham, which were free in the parks of that area. And she said, why isn't there a free festival in Brighton? And various people got together and said, yeah, let's do one on the level, because we, we moved into a house on South Oak Street near the level. And um, got a group of people around us who had contacts in music and um, theatre, uh, and, I, and I had experience with designing posters and so on, so I was on the publicity side. And we got uh, the first one together in what, 1st of September 1984. Uh, and we used to have weekly meetings and put out the word to local bands that if they wanted to perform, we had to get a free entry to their gigs in order to hear what they were like. Uh, and we were looking for mostly sort of home written stuff rather than covered band cover bands um people doing original material which was deserved to go further than just brighton and hopefully up and coming bands at the time um i particularly remember lots of uh, post punk types with enormous tie dyed colored mohicans on their head that was one of my main memories of it and, you know, quite a lot of family people as well. It was like a family occasion as well as just for local music bands because there was a kid's area, uh, theatre groups, um, good choice of food. So, yeah, it was a good family day out, really. When we first started it, no one could really sort of get air out of the top or, you know, maybe like a, like a foot or two foot. And within sort of... A month, six weeks, people were hitting six, seven foot out the top of the ramp, you know, and all sorts of crazy, crazy tricks going on. And um, it was just real good to see people progressing that way. And, and because of the nature of our little crew and everyone pushing each other and pushing and pushing each other to, to try and learn stuff, you know, people were just learning so quick. And some of the younger kids were just getting really good. You know, it was really good to see. I mean, a lot of people got hurt on it, you know, injured. And um, we, at one point, we had about five people with broken bones sort of sat down watching. And um, the nickname for that would be Death Row, like you're on Death Row. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's quite funny. I was going to say there's no serious injury, but broken bones, I suppose, is as serious as it got. A few broken, broken arms, broken uh, collarbones, 
a couple of legs. I broke my ankle on it, um, messing around actually. So uh, yeah, we all had we all had a little time on death row. I remember one guy, uh, Ginge. He flew out the side of the ramp, over the hedge, over the rose bush, and landed on the pathway that goes up the middle of the level. He just. <laughs> He just got up with a few scratches on his legs from the rose bush, and we was all stood on the top of the ramp laughing our heads off at him. There's an old, an old punk, I think he resides in Kentdown quite a lot, and um, apparently he's got two, two amazing old lurchers that like, should be from a Robin Hood film. And um, I don't know if I can repeat what he says when he's, uh, when he's begging, but he, he, he's quite honest with uh, wanting money and saying what he needs it for, and smiling while doing it. But I remember many mornings coming down Hanover, starting to skate, and um, suddenly two lurchers running into the park and just running around, springing around, and, um, and suddenly an old punk coming out like a troll under the bridge. Do you know what time it is? It's just eight in the morning. What are you doing? People trying to sleep round here. And then reciting back onto his bridge. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, he was quite a funny guy. He'd always talk to the skaters, but at the same time, kind of lived there and tell him off of his with come skating into his living room. I used to go to level every day on my way back from St Bartholomew's School. I lived in Washington Street, just off of South Over Street. And um, me and my friends used to hang out in the level all the time until tea time, and then we'd go our separate ways. And one of my really early memories of the level, apart from the paddling pool, was uh, jumping backwards off of a really, really fast moving roundabout. and. Um, taking most of the skin off my elbow um and all my friends standing around looking at the grit that had sort of been left there and uh, a very 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 old brighton tramp coming by and very gently taking my elbow and the rest of me over to the water fountain and washing all the grit out of my elbow and patting it dry with a old handkerchief handkerchief from his pockets and uh, didn't say a word to me and just and then just went on his way and I sort of trembled and said thank you and uh, and then went home for tea <laughs> he had very very filthy fingernails I seem to remember and he was very grisly and old he was probably only about 50 at the time but <laughs> yeah he was like one of the known tramps of Brighton and I used to see him around the level all the time I mean he's calling the scary man and then suddenly he had my elbow in his hand <laughs> but bless him, I, I will never forget that. I, I, amongst other memories of the level, that's the one that really sort of stands out. Well, it was just huge trees lying like down in the corner. But the problem I had of me, you, you couldn't get to, through the level because it was all fallen trees. Huge trees too. They were just torn up by the roots. Some of them, some of them even stepped off, and nothing could move. So uh, we went in there, me and my mate, with a chainsaw, and because uh, they asked for volunteers, and helped them cut them up. Yeah, it was pretty horrific. Yeah, we didn't get a warning or anything. It was always the place to meet up for a march often down to the Brighton Centre when there was a big party political conference going on. And of course the 80s was a very political time. So there were many, many marches from the level at that time. And I think as a student I would have gone on some of those. Um, and later on uh, I, I became very involved with the peace movement. Um, because was uh, became secretary of Brighton and Hove campaign for nuclear disarmament in 1985, I think. Um, and then ended up organising some political rallies and marches that started at the level, um, including a, a big march down to the uh, Brighton Centre from the level. Uh, I think at that point it was the uh, Labour Party conference. Um, but the Labour Party at the time had been committed to nuclear disarmament and was, was uh, wanting to drop that commitment, really. And uh, so the peace movement, of course, at the time was wanted to put a very strong message across, you know, ma maintain this commitment to nuclear disarmament, scrap the, the um, plans for the Trident nuclear weapon system. Um, and so we had a very big march from the level and uh, gathered at the level, of course, with speeches and things. 
um, and then march from, from there down to the pier and along to the uh, to the Brighton Centre. But that's been one of the big features of the level, not just for peace rallies, but for all sorts of political rallies ever ever since then, and still is, and is a great part of its uh, of its heritage. It's, it's our sort of Hyde Park equivalent or Trafalgar Square equivalent, I suppose. So the word went around the local network uh, asking for tents or any equipment, anything, folding chairs, all those sort of things, just practical stuff. And people met up and started to put up a couple of tents. Uh, nobody knew what the reaction would be, of course. Um, we had fires and um, people came along with more equipment. Uh, they came along with food, uh, packets of fruit juice, all that sort of thing that could be stored. Uh, and we were really quite a focus because obviously the level, that corner of the level is very public. Buses were going past, we were getting lots of uh, toots. Uh, people would walk past, stop, ask, and it was a very good focus. Mosley tackled the Brighton police and told them they were coming down to a recruiting meeting at the level, but they would want the uh, police to protect them because they had learned that the 43 group were going to attack them. So could the police provide protection? They did. You know how many they... six... And they were saying to the fascists when they were coming out of the station, go back, we don't want you here. The police were very good. And then the um, train came in, a lot of fascists came on that plane. And uh, then Mosley appeared and their band appeared. The big drum was played by a German who had been taken prisoner of war. He'd been a Nazi and... Uh, he was banging the big plum. Then most, most of these protected by his guard. And uh, they started marching from the station down, making for the level, you see. And that's when the fighting started. I think we had about over 300 fellows came down. And uh, anyway, the march started. And then our fellows started attacking the thing. Oh, there were stones going in. The band was broken up, the big drum was um, broken, and this German, you could see the two pairs of legs sticking out of the top. It became mayhem. And then, what was good, suddenly um, we noticed elderly men coming out with their sticks, like in the passes. How are we going here? I fought in the First World War. How did you fought? Anyway. I think the police did make um, Mosley realise the best thing he could do was to go home. We used to have our caravans here and the, and the, and the, park, and the park people, uh, you know, the, the, the tinny people and that, they used to sit on the bench outside our caravan. We used to strike up conversation with the police. They got to know us, they was all the first name terms, they was good as gold. No, it's good as gold. Though my uncle was carrying the cash box from the Dodgems uh, one one. Day one one evening, he was carrying it and he was getting on. Then Michael was, and he and he fell over, coming up round here, and it was an open cash box, and the cash went everywhere, all over the floor. It wasn't a huge; it was only on a week now, but it only was. I think it was like rain. I think we closed early, but all the people off the bench, the other ones, they all got up and picked him up, and they put all the money back in the box. And oh, Mr. Cole, they said, "Oh, look, Mr. Cole, you've fallen over," and they were so worried, and one of them was crying and everything. And my uncle said, he said, you know what, he said, every penny went back in that box. Yeah, they put every penny back in the box room. It's really uh, crazy. But I do get a lot of pleasure walking along there. I, I know even when I was working, I used to sit down there sometimes and have my sandwiches. And it, I mean, a lot of people do use the level, don't they? You know, and what would we do without it? It's Brighton, isn't it? Well, one of the main parts of Brighton. Yes, a lot of pleasure.